Ever feel overwhelmed by life's complexities? The audiobook, Reprogram Yourself, Focus on Critical Thinking Every Day, is your key to mastering critical thinking. Discover how to clear mental clutter, make sound decisions, and navigate challenges with confidence. Through practical exercises, you'll rewire your thinking patterns, becoming a sharp, logical powerhouse. Don't let clouded judgment hold you back. Transform your mind, enhance your decision-making, and unlock your full potential in every aspect of life. Before we go on, I invite you to download the free bundle, which contains the ebook version of this book and an executive summary of all the chapters with the key takeaways. Studies show that engaging with content through multiple formats significantly enhances learning and retention. Click on the first link in the description to claim your free bundle now and maximize your learning potential. Now it's free, but it won't be for long, so make sure to grab it while you can. Chapter 1. Clear the Mind In the bustling landscape of modern life, our minds often resemble cluttered attics, filled with a jumble of thoughts, worries, and distractions. This mental chaos can severely impair our ability to think critically and make sound decisions. As we embark on this journey to reprogram ourselves for enhanced critical thinking, our first crucial step is to clear the mind. Imagine trying to solve a complex puzzle in a room filled with blaring televisions, ringing phones, and people shouting. It would be nearly impossible to focus, let alone arrive at a thoughtful solution. Similarly, when our minds are overloaded with mental noise, our capacity for deep analytical thinking is significantly diminished. Cognitive load theory, a cornerstone of modern psychology, tells us that our working memory, the mental workspace where we process information, has limited capacity. When this space is cluttered with unnecessary thoughts and distractions, we have less cognitive resources available for critical thinking tasks. By clearing our minds, we create the mental space necessary for more profound and effective thought processes. As you begin this chapter, you might wonder what you can realistically achieve in your first attempt. The primary goal is to understand the profound impact that mental clutter has on your ability to think critically. You'll learn to identify the personal sources of distraction and mental overload that plague your daily life. Armed with this awareness, you'll be equipped to implement techniques that enhance your concentration and focus. Perhaps most importantly, you'll establish a daily routine for mental preparation and practice, laying the groundwork for lasting change. But what can this lead to over time if you continue to practice? The potential is truly transformative. With consistent effort, you can develop sustained mental clarity and focus that permeates all aspects of your life. Your capacity for deep, critical thought will expand, allowing you to tackle complex problems with greater ease and insight. This mental decluttering serves as a strong foundation for ongoing mental reprogramming, opening doors to continued personal and professional growth. Many who commit to this practice also report experiencing reduced stress levels and increased productivity as the mental noise that once drained their energy dissipates. Let's delve into what's involved in this process and the most crucial steps. First and foremost, we must understand mental clutter and its effects. This awareness is the key that unlocks the door to change. Next, we'll focus on identifying and eliminating sources of distraction. This step is critical because it allows us to target the specific issues that impede our mental clarity. With a clearer mental landscape, we can then set intentional cognitive goals. This provides direction and purpose to our efforts, ensuring that we're not just clearing our minds aimlessly, but with a specific intent to enhance our critical thinking abilities. Following this, we'll practice techniques to enhance concentration, building our mental muscles for sustained focus. Finally, we'll establish a consistent daily practice routine, because lasting change comes through repetition and habit formation. You might wonder why these steps are important and why they're presented in this particular order. The sequence is deliberate and based on proven psychological principles. Clearing the mind is essential before introducing new mental programming. Think of it as preparing a canvas before creating a masterpiece. Identifying distractions allows for targeted elimination, increasing the efficiency of our efforts. 
Setting goals provides direction and purpose, motivating us to persist even when the process becomes challenging. Enhancing concentration is crucial for deep engagement with the exercises that follow, ensuring we get the most benefit from our practice. Lastly, establishing a daily routine ensures consistency, which is the key to solidifying new habits and making lasting changes to our thought patterns. Now, let's explore the nature of mental clutter in more depth. Mental overload has profound effects on our cognitive function. When our minds are cluttered, our ability to concentrate diminishes significantly. We may find ourselves reading the same paragraph multiple times without comprehension or struggling to follow the thread of a conversation. Decision-making becomes impaired as we struggle to weigh options clearly and consider consequences thoroughly. The emotional consequences of mental clutter are equally significant. Increased stress levels are a common result as our minds work overtime trying to juggle multiple thoughts and worries. This constant mental activity can lead to anxiety and if left unchecked, even burnout. The toll on our emotional well-being can be severe, affecting our relationships, work performance, and overall quality of life. Identifying sources of distraction is a critical step in clearing our minds. External distractions are often the most obvious culprits. The constant ping of email notifications, the buzz of text messages, and the allure of social media updates create a near-constant stream of interruptions. Environmental factors like noise pollution or frequent interruptions from colleagues can also significantly impede our ability to think clearly. However, internal distractions can be even more insidious. Worry and rumination, the tendency to replay negative thoughts or scenarios in our minds, can create a persistent mental fog that's hard to dispel. The myth of multitasking also contributes to mental clutter. Despite the popular belief that we can effectively juggle multiple tasks simultaneously, research consistently shows that multitasking actually reduces our efficiency and increases mental strain. With a clear understanding of mental clutter and its sources, we can move on to setting intentional focus. This process begins with defining our cognitive goals. We need to clarify our purpose, why do we want to enhance our critical thinking abilities? What specific areas of our lives do we hope to improve? It's helpful to distinguish between short-term and long-term goals. Short-term goals might include being able to focus on a task for 30 minutes without distraction, while long-term goals could involve making more informed decisions in your career or personal life. Aligning these goals with our personal values ensures that our efforts are meaningful and sustainable. For instance, if you value innovation in your work, your goal might be to enhance your critical thinking to generate more creative solutions to problems. When setting these cognitive goals, it's useful to employ the SMART criteria, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Instead of a vague goal like think more critically, you might set a SMART goal such as spend 20 minutes each day analyzing a current event from multiple perspectives for the next month. With our goals set, we can turn to techniques for enhancing concentration. Mindfulness exercises are particularly effective in this regard. Breath awareness, for instance, involves focusing your attention on the sensation of breathing, gently returning your focus whenever your mind wanders. This simple practice strengthens your ability to maintain focus and resist distractions. Present moment focus is another powerful mindfulness technique. This involves fully engaging with whatever task or experience is at hand, rather than allowing your mind to drift to past regrets or future worries. By anchoring yourself in the present, you create a mental environment conducive to clear, focused thinking. Environment optimization is equally crucial in enhancing concentration. Creating a distraction-free space for critical thinking can significantly boost your ability to focus. This might involve designating a specific area in your home for deep work, free from the temptations of television or other distractions. Time-blocking strategies, where you schedule specific periods for focused work and stick to them rigorously, can also be highly effective. As we prepare for the mental reprogramming journey ahead, establishing a daily practice routine is essential. 
Consistency is the key to rewiring our brains for enhanced critical thinking. This means scheduling specific times for practice and sticking to them, even when it's inconvenient. Building habits through repetition is how we make lasting changes to our thought patterns. Overcoming procrastination is often a significant challenge in establishing this routine. It's important to identify the sources of resistance. Are you afraid of failure? Overwhelmed by the task? Once you understand what's holding you back, you can develop strategies to overcome these obstacles. Accountability measures, such as sharing your goals with a friend or joining a study group, can provide the external motivation needed to stay on track. Finally, tracking your progress is crucial for maintaining motivation and identifying areas for improvement. Journaling methods can be particularly effective. Reflective writing prompts encourage you to delve deep into your thought processes, uncovering patterns and insights. Monitoring your thought patterns over time allows you to see your progress and adjust your approach as needed. Digital aids can also be valuable tools in this process. Productivity apps can help you stay on track with your practice routine, while mindfulness and focus tools can support your concentration exercises. As we conclude this chapter, remember that clearing your mind is not a one-time event, but an ongoing process. It's the foundation upon which all your future critical thinking skills will be built. By creating mental space and establishing focused routines, you're preparing yourself for the transformative journey ahead. In the next chapter, we'll explore how to rewire your reactions, building on the mental clarity you've established. You'll learn to pause before responding impulsively, creating space for more thoughtful, deliberate actions. This skill will prove invaluable as you continue to develop your critical thinking abilities, allowing you to approach challenges with a calm, clear mind. Before we continue, Make sure to subscribe to Grow to the Top and activate notifications to receive more self-improvement tips that will supercharge your growth. And make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. It really helps the channel grow. Thank you for your support. Chapter 2. Rewire Your Reactions Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you wished you could take back your words or actions? We've all been there. In the heat of the moment, we react without thinking, only to regret it later. These automatic responses, while sometimes useful, can often lead us astray, especially when it comes to critical thinking and decision-making. But what if there was a way to change these ingrained patterns? What if you could train yourself to respond thoughtfully instead of reacting impulsively? This is where the concept of rewiring your reactions comes into play and it's more powerful than you might imagine. At its core, rewiring your reactions is about taking control of your automatic responses. It's about creating a space between stimulus and response, a moment of clarity in which you can choose how to act rather than being at the mercy of your impulses. This skill is crucial not just for personal interactions, but for every aspect of life that requires careful thought and consideration. The importance of this skill cannot be overstated. Automatic reactions, while sometimes helpful in emergencies, can often lead to impulsive decisions and mistakes in our daily lives. These knee-jerk responses bypass our rational thinking processes, leading us to act in ways that may not align with our true intentions or values. By learning to rewire these reactions, we enhance our self-control and emotional intelligence. We become better equipped to navigate complex situations, make thoughtful decisions, and interact more effectively with others. Perhaps most importantly, it allows us to align our responses with our goals and values, ensuring that our actions are consistent with who we want to be and what we want to achieve. But to understand how to rewire our reactions, we first need to delve into the nature of automatic responses. Our brains are incredibly efficient machines constantly looking for ways to conserve energy. One way they do this is by creating habits and automatic responses to familiar stimuli. This process involves the formation of neural pathways, essentially well-worn routes in our brains that signals tend to follow. The science of habitual thinking is fascinating. Every time we repeat a thought or action, we strengthen the corresponding neural pathway. 
This is the basis of neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to change and adapt based on experience. The more we repeat a pattern, the more automatic it becomes. This is great when we're learning a new skill, but it can work against us when the habit is an unhelpful reaction. The role of the subconscious in this process is significant. Many of our reactions occur without conscious thought. They're automatic responses programmed into our subconscious mind. These unconscious influences on our behavior can be powerful, shaping our actions in ways we might not even realize. The formation of automatic reactions is a complex process influenced by various factors. Conditioning and learned behaviors play a crucial role. Classical conditioning, famously demonstrated by Pavlov's experiments with dogs, shows how we can develop automatic responses to certain stimuli. Operant conditioning, on the other hand, involves learning from the consequences of our actions. Social learning and imitation also contribute to the formation of our automatic reactions. We often pick up behaviors and responses by observing others, especially during our formative years. This is why we might find ourselves reacting to situations in ways similar to our parents or peers. Past experiences, particularly those with strong emotional components, can have a profound impact on our automatic reactions. Emotional conditioning can create deep-seated response patterns that are triggered by specific situations or stimuli. Traumatic experiences, in particular, can lead to automatic reactions designed to protect us, even if those reactions are no longer helpful or appropriate in our current circumstances. Understanding these underlying mechanisms is the first step in rewiring our reactions. But how do we actually go about changing these ingrained patterns? This is where the pause technique comes into play. The pause technique is a powerful tool for interrupting automatic reactions and creating space for more thoughtful responses. At its core, it involves introducing a brief moment of mindfulness between a trigger and your reaction. This pause, even if it's just for a few seconds, can make all the difference in how you respond to a situation. To implement this technique effectively, we first need to become adept at recognizing trigger moments. These are the situations or stimuli that tend to provoke automatic reactions. Identifying emotional cues is a crucial part of this process. Our bodies often signal impending reactions through physical sensations, a tightening in the chest, a clenching of the jaw, a sudden surge of energy. Learning to recognize these physical cues can give us a heads up that we're about to react automatically. Similarly, certain thought patterns often precede impulsive reactions. These might be judgmental thoughts, assumptions about others' intentions, or catastrophizing about potential outcomes. By becoming aware of these thought patterns, we can catch ourselves before we react. Situational awareness is another important aspect of recognizing trigger moments. Certain contexts or environments might be more likely to elicit automatic responses. For instance, high-stress work situations or interactions with specific individuals might be common triggers. By identifying these patterns, we can be better prepared to implement the pause technique when we need it most. Once we've recognized a trigger moment, the next step is to implement a mindful pause. This doesn't have to be a long or complicated process. It can be as simple as taking a deep breath before responding. The key is to interrupt the automatic flow from trigger to reaction, creating a space for conscious choice. One effective method is the stop, breathe, reflect, respond approach. When you notice a trigger, mentally tell yourself to stop. Take a deep breath to center yourself. Reflect briefly on the situation and your feelings, then choose how to respond. Counting techniques can also be useful for delaying reactions. For instance, you might count to five slowly before responding. This not only creates a pause, but also helps to engage your rational mind, pulling you out of the emotional reactivity that often drives automatic responses. During this pause, it can be helpful to ask yourself a few key questions. What am I feeling right now? can help you identify and name your emotions, a crucial step in managing them effectively. What is the best response in this situation encourages you to consider your options and choose a response aligned with your values and goals. With practice, these pauses become more natural and automatic.
you'll find yourself naturally taking a moment to consider your response in challenging situations rather than reacting impulsively. The ultimate goal of rewiring your reactions is to cultivate mindful responses, thoughtful actions that align with your intentions and values. This involves transforming what were once automatic reactions into conscious choices. One way to approach this is by reflecting on desired outcomes. When faced with a triggering situation, ask yourself, what do I hope to achieve here? This can help guide your response in a more productive direction. It's also important to consider your personal values. How can you respond in a way that's consistent with who you want to be? Practice scenarios can be incredibly helpful in developing this skill. By role-playing difficult situations in a low-stakes environment, you can practice implementing the pause technique and choosing mindful responses. This preparation can make it easier to respond thoughtfully when you encounter similar situations in real life. Exercises for self-awareness are also crucial in cultivating mindful responses. Mindfulness meditation practices, such as body scan meditation or observing thoughts without judgment, can enhance your overall awareness and make it easier to catch yourself before reacting automatically. Reflective journaling is another powerful tool. By analyzing your daily reactions and identifying patterns, you can gain insights into your triggers and automatic responses. This awareness is the first step in changing these patterns. To truly rewire your reactions, it's important to put these concepts into practice in your daily life. The mindful pause practice is a great place to start. Throughout your day, make a conscious effort to pause before responding, especially in situations that typically trigger automatic reactions. Keep a log of these instances, noting the trigger, how you paused, and the outcome of your mindful response. Trigger identification is another practical exercise that can yield significant benefits. Take some time to create a list of your common triggers. These might be specific situations, people, or even internal states like hunger or fatigue. For each trigger, develop a strategy for implementing the pause technique. This preparation can make it easier to respond mindfully when you encounter these triggers in real life. As you embark on this journey of rewiring your reactions, it's helpful to consider the range of possible outcomes. A good outcome might be an increased awareness of your automatic reactions. You might find yourself catching your reactions more often, even if you don't always manage to pause before responding. This awareness alone is a significant step forward. An excellent outcome would be a consistent ability to pause and choose thoughtful responses in most situations you might notice improved interactions with others and better decision-making overall. Your increased self-awareness and control over your reactions can lead to more satisfying personal and professional relationships. The best possible outcome is when mindful responses become your new automatic. In this scenario, you've so thoroughly rewired your reactions that pausing and responding thoughtfully becomes your natural way of interacting with the world. This can lead to significantly enhanced relationships and greater success in achieving your personal goals. Of course, rewiring your reactions is not always a smooth process. You might encounter some challenges along the way. One common issue is difficulty recognizing triggers in the moment. If you find yourself struggling with this, try setting regular reminders to check in with your emotional state. This can help you become more attuned to your triggers over time. Another potential pitfall is forgetting to pause in high-stress situations. These are often the times when we most need to pause, but also when it's hardest to remember to do so. To overcome this, try practicing the pause technique in low-stress environments first. As it becomes more habitual, you'll find it easier to implement even in challenging situations. Frustration with slow progress is another common issue. Remember, you're working to change patterns that may have been in place for years or even decades. It takes time and patience. Acknowledge your small victories along the way and be kind to yourself as you learn and grow. As we conclude this chapter, you might be wondering what comes next on this journey of mental reprogramming. How can you build on this newfound ability to pause and respond mindfully? 
What other mental habits might be ripe for transformation? The next chapter will introduce you to a powerful technique for challenging the very foundations of your thinking. It's a method that can revolutionize not just how you react, but how you perceive the world around you. Are you ready to question everything you think you know? Chapter 3. Deprogram Assumptions We all like to think of ourselves as rational beings, making decisions based on careful consideration and objective facts. But what if I told you that many of our choices and beliefs are shaped by hidden forces we're not even aware of? These invisible influencers are our assumptions, the unexamined beliefs that form the foundation of our worldview. Imagine your mind as a vast library. Every book on the shelves represents a piece of knowledge or a belief you hold. Now, picture some of these books sealed shut, their contents never questioned or examined. These are your assumptions, the ideas you've accepted without scrutiny. They might have been placed there by your upbringing, your culture, or your experiences. But have you ever stopped to wonder what's really written on those pages? This chapter is about opening those sealed books, examining their contents, and deciding whether they truly belong in your mental library. It's a process of deprogramming, dismantling the automatic thought patterns that may be limiting your perspective and hindering your critical thinking abilities. But why is this important? Why should we bother to challenge ideas that seem so fundamental to our understanding of the world? The answer lies in the power of assumptions to shape our reality. Our assumptions act as filters through which we perceive and interpret the world around us. When left unexamined, they can limit our understanding and lead to errors in judgment. Think about a time when you were absolutely certain about something, only to later discover you were mistaken. Chances are that certainty was built on unexamined assumptions. By learning to identify and challenge these assumptions, we open ourselves up to new possibilities and perspectives. This process promotes open-mindedness and personal growth, allowing us to expand our understanding and adapt to new information. Moreover, deprogramming assumptions is crucial for effective problem solving. Often, the barriers that prevent us from finding innovative solutions are not external obstacles, but our own hidden assumptions about what is possible or acceptable. By uncovering and challenging these assumptions, we can break through mental blocks and discover new approaches to challenges. So how do we begin this process of deprogramming? The first step is to become aware of our assumptions. This can be trickier than it sounds, as many of our most deeply held assumptions are so ingrained that we don't even recognize them as beliefs. We simply accept them as the way things are. Some common limiting assumptions include stereotypes and generalizations about groups of people or situations. These mental shortcuts can lead us to make unfair judgments or overlook important nuances. Another category of assumptions that often holds us back are self-limiting beliefs about our own abilities and potential. These might manifest as thoughts like, I'm not creative, or I'm bad at math, which can become self-fulfilling prophecies if left unchallenged. To uncover these hidden assumptions, we need to develop a habit of self-reflection and critical inquiry. One powerful method for this is the five whys technique. This involves asking why repeatedly to dig deeper into the roots of our beliefs. For example, if you believe you can't learn a new skill, ask yourself why. Then ask why again to the answer you give, and so on, five times. This process often reveals underlying assumptions that you may not have been aware of. Another useful tool is keeping thought records. This involves documenting situations where you notice strong reactions or beliefs, and then examining the thoughts and assumptions underlying those reactions. Over time, this practice can help you identify patterns in your thinking and spot recurring assumptions. Once we've identified our assumptions, the next step is to challenge them. This is where things can get uncomfortable. Many of our assumptions have been with us for so long that they feel like part of our identity. Questioning them can feel threatening or disorienting. But remember, the goal isn't to discard everything you believe. It's to ensure that your beliefs are based on solid evidence and reasoning rather than unexamined habit. 
One effective method for challenging assumptions is Socratic questioning. This involves asking probing questions to clarify thinking and examine the evidence and rationale behind beliefs. Some key Socratic questions include, what evidence do I have for this belief? Could there be alternative explanations? What would happen if this assumption were not true? Developing a healthy sense of skepticism is crucial in this process. This doesn't mean becoming cynical or dismissing everything as false. Rather, it means cultivating a willingness to question and verify information before accepting it as true. The key is to strike a balance, to be open to new ideas while also maintaining a critical eye. As you engage in this process of questioning, it's important to differentiate between facts and opinions. Facts are verifiable through objective evidence, while opinions are subjective interpretations or judgments. Many of our assumptions blur the line between fact and opinion, presenting subjective beliefs as objective truths. Learning to recognize this distinction can help you evaluate the validity of your assumptions more accurately. When evaluating the evidence behind your beliefs, consider the sources of your information. Are they reliable? Do they have any potential biases? Have you sought out diverse perspectives on the issue? Often, our assumptions are reinforced by selective exposure to information that confirms what we already believe. Breaking out of this echo chamber is essential for developing a more balanced and accurate worldview. As you challenge and dismantle limiting assumptions, you'll need to rebuild your thought patterns on a more solid foundation. This involves adopting an open-minded approach to the world around you. Embrace uncertainty and ambiguity. The world is complex, and it's okay not to have all the answers. In fact, being comfortable with uncertainty can lead to more nuanced and accurate thinking. Seek out diverse perspectives and information. Engage with ideas that challenge your existing beliefs. This doesn't mean you have to agree with everything you encounter, but exposing yourself to a wide range of viewpoints can help you develop a more comprehensive understanding of complex issues. To reinforce objective thinking, consider using affirmations that promote open-mindedness. Phrases like, I am open to new ideas, or I seek to understand before judging, can help shift your mindset over time. Regular exposure to new ideas and experiences is also crucial. This could involve reading books on unfamiliar topics, attending lectures or workshops outside your usual areas of interest, or engaging in discussions with people who have different backgrounds and perspectives from your own. Now, let's explore some practical exercises to help you put these ideas into action. One powerful practice is assumption journaling. Each day, try to identify at least one situation where you made an assumption. Write it down and then reflect on the validity of that assumption. What evidence do you have to support it? Could there be alternative explanations or perspectives you haven't considered? Another effective exercise is to challenge one assumption daily. Choose a belief you hold and actively seek out evidence that contradicts it. This doesn't mean you have to change your mind, but the process of engaging with opposing viewpoints can broaden your perspective and deepen your understanding. After exploring this contradictory evidence, analyze how it affects your original belief. Has it changed? strengthened, become more nuanced? As you embark on this journey of deprogramming assumptions, it's helpful to consider the range of possible outcomes. A good outcome might be an increased awareness of your personal assumptions. You might find yourself occasionally questioning ingrained beliefs, even if you don't always change them. This awareness alone can lead to more thoughtful decision-making and interactions with others an excellent outcome would involve regularly challenging and revising your assumptions. You might notice an enhanced ability to think objectively, considering multiple perspectives before drawing conclusions. This can lead to more innovative problem solving and more effective communication with others who hold different viewpoints. The best possible outcome is developing a habit of open-minded inquiry that permeates all aspects of your life. This could result in significant personal and professional growth as you continually expand your perspectives and adapt your thinking based on new information and experiences. You might find yourself becoming more adaptable, 
more empathetic, and more capable of navigating complex situations. Of course, the process of deprogramming assumptions isn't always smooth sailing. You might encounter some challenges along the way. One common issue is resistance to challenging long-held beliefs. This is natural. Our assumptions often feel like a core part of our identity, and questioning them can be uncomfortable or even frightening. If you find yourself struggling with this, try to remind yourself of the benefits of growth and learning. Remember that challenging an assumption doesn't necessarily mean discarding it. It means examining it to ensure it truly serves you. Another potential pitfall is feeling overwhelmed by uncertainty. As you start to question your assumptions, you might feel like you're losing your footing, unsure of what to believe. This is a normal part of the learning process. Try to embrace this uncertainty as a sign of growth. It means you're expanding your understanding and considering new possibilities. You might also encounter difficulty in finding alternative perspectives, especially if you're surrounded by people who share similar views. To overcome this, make a conscious effort to seek out diverse sources of information. This could involve reading books or articles from authors with different backgrounds or viewpoints, attending events or lectures on unfamiliar topics, or engaging in respectful discussions with people who hold different beliefs. As we conclude this chapter on deprogramming assumptions, you might be wondering what's next on this journey of mental reprogramming. We've explored how to identify and challenge our hidden assumptions, but what about the lens through which we view the world itself? Is it possible that the very framework we use to interpret our experiences could be limiting our understanding? In the next chapter, we'll dive into a powerful technique that can radically alter your perspective, opening up new avenues of thought you might never have considered. Are you ready to see the world in a whole new light? Chapter 4, Reframe Perspectives Have you ever stood in front of a funhouse mirror? The image you see is still you, but it's distorted, elongated, or compressed in ways that make you almost unrecognizable. Now, imagine if you could do that with your thoughts. Stretch them, bend them, view them from angles you've never considered before. This is the essence of reframing perspectives, a powerful tool in the arsenal of critical thinking. But what exactly does it mean to reframe a perspective? At its core, reframing is about shifting the lens through which you view a situation, problem, or idea. It's like adjusting the focus on a camera. Suddenly, elements that were blurry come into sharp relief, while others that seemed central fade into the background. This shift can reveal aspects of a situation you might never have noticed otherwise. The ability to reframe perspectives is not just a neat mental trick. It's a crucial skill for navigating our complex, rapidly changing world. When we're stuck in a single way of thinking, we limit our ability to solve problems effectively. It's like trying to unlock a door with only one key when the lock requires a combination. By expanding our perspectives, we give ourselves access to a whole ring of keys, dramatically increasing our chances of finding a solution. But the benefits of reframing go beyond problem solving. When we practice seeing situations from multiple angles, we naturally develop greater empathy. We begin to understand that our way of seeing things isn't the only valid viewpoint. This understanding can transform our interpersonal relationships, fostering deeper connections and more effective communication. Perhaps most excitingly, reframing allows us to turn challenges into opportunities. When we're locked into a single perspective, obstacles can seem insurmountable. But shift the frame, and suddenly that mountain becomes a molehill, or better yet, a gold mine of potential. This ability to find the silver lining, to see setbacks as stepping stones, can be transformative in both personal and professional contexts. So how do we develop this ability to shift perspectives at will? It starts with recognizing the power of cognitive flexibility. Our brains are remarkably adaptable organs, capable of forming new neural pathways throughout our lives. When we practice looking at situations from different angles, we're literally rewiring our brains, enhancing our creativity and innovation. This cognitive flexibility also makes us more adaptable to change and uncertainty. In a world where the only constant is change, 
The ability to quickly shift perspectives and adapt to new situations is invaluable. It's like mental yoga. The more we stretch our minds, the more flexible and resilient they become. However, before we can start reframing, we need to recognize when we're stuck in single-minded thinking. This tunnel vision can be insidious, narrowing our field of view so gradually that we don't even notice it happening. Signs of tunnel vision might include feeling stuck or frustrated, dismissing others' ideas out of hand, or feeling certain that there's only one right answer to a problem. To overcome this single-mindedness, we need to embrace complexity and nuance. The world is rarely black and white. Most situations involve shades of gray. By acknowledging this complexity, we open ourselves up to a richer, more nuanced understanding of the world around us. One powerful technique for shifting perspectives is role-playing. This involves mentally stepping into someone else's shoes and trying to see the situation from their point of view. For example, if you're facing a conflict at work, try to imagine how each person involved perceives the situation. What are their goals? What are their fears or concerns? What information do they have that you might not? This technique can be particularly useful in decision-making contexts. By considering the viewpoints of all stakeholders, not just the most obvious ones, you can make more informed, balanced decisions. You might uncover potential problems or opportunities that weren't visible from your original perspective. Empathy plays a crucial role in this process. It's not enough to intellectually understand another person's viewpoint. We need to connect with the emotional context behind their perspective. This involves more than just imagining how we would feel in their situation. It requires us to truly listen and try to understand their unique emotional landscape. Active listening is a key skill in this regard. This means not just hearing the words someone is saying, but truly focusing on understanding their message. It involves paying attention to nonverbal cues, asking clarifying questions, and reflecting back what you've heard to ensure you've understood correctly. By honing these skills, we can gain a much deeper understanding of others' perspectives. Once we've developed the ability to see situations from multiple angles, we can start applying this skill to reframe our daily experiences. One powerful application is turning problems into opportunities. This doesn't mean adopting a naive, everything happens for a reason mentality. Rather, it's about training ourselves to look for potential benefits or learning experiences in challenging situations. For example, if a project at work doesn't go as planned, instead of focusing solely on what went wrong, we might ask ourselves, what can we learn from this experience? How might this setback actually create new opportunities? What skills or knowledge have we gained that might be valuable in the future? This positive reframing technique can be particularly powerful when dealing with setbacks. By viewing difficulties as learning experiences rather than failures, we can maintain motivation and resilience in the face of challenges. This doesn't mean ignoring or minimizing problems. It's about finding constructive ways to move forward. Solution-focused thinking is another valuable reframing technique. Instead of dwelling on the problem itself, we shift our attention to potential solutions. This might involve asking questions like, what would success look like in this situation? What small step could we take right now to move in that direction? What resources or strengths do we have that could help us overcome this challenge? To further expand our perspectives, we can practice challenging either-or thinking. Often, when we're stuck, it's because we've falsely limited ourselves to two options. By asking what other possibilities exist, we can open up new avenues of thought. This might involve combining elements of different options or coming up with entirely new alternatives. Exploring what-if scenarios is another powerful tool for expanding perspectives. This involves imagining different possible outcomes or situations, even ones that might seem unlikely or impossible at first glance. By allowing our minds to play with these possibilities, we can generate innovative ideas and prepare ourselves for a wider range of potential futures. To put these concepts into practice, try this perspective-taking exercise. Choose a situation you're currently dealing with and challenge yourself to view it from at least three different perspectives. 
These could be the viewpoints of different people involved or different aspects of yourself, e.g. emotional self, rational self, future self. Write down what you notice from each perspective. How does your understanding of the situation change as you shift your viewpoint? Another practical exercise is reframing challenges. The next time you face a problem, make a list of potential opportunities it presents. These could be opportunities for learning, for strengthening relationships, for developing new skills, or for making positive changes. The goal isn't to ignore the difficulty of the situation, but to train your mind to automatically look for potential benefits. As you begin to incorporate these reframing techniques into your daily life, you might start to notice some changes. A good outcome would be an occasional ability to see situations from multiple perspectives. You might find yourself having more aha moments in your personal interactions as you start to understand where others are coming from. An excellent outcome would involve regularly reframing challenges and finding innovative solutions to problems. You might notice enhanced creativity in your work or personal projects and greater adaptability when facing changes or setbacks. Your ability to think outside the box might become a valuable asset in various areas of your life. The best possible outcome is developing a habit of perspective shifting that becomes second nature. This could lead to exceptional problem-solving skills as you're able to quickly and easily view situations from multiple angles. You might find your relationships deepening and becoming more rewarding as your enhanced empathy and understanding allow for more meaningful connections. Of course, like any skill, reframing perspectives takes practice and can come with some challenges. You might find it difficult at first to step outside your personal viewpoint, especially on topics you feel strongly about. If you encounter this issue, try practicing active listening and asking open-ended questions. The goal is to understand other perspectives, not necessarily to agree with them. Another potential pitfall is feeling overwhelmed by multiple perspectives. When we start to see the complexity in every situation, it can sometimes feel paralyzing. If you find yourself in this situation, try to focus on the most relevant viewpoints and prioritize accordingly. Remember, the goal is to expand your perspective, not to consider every possible angle before making a decision. You might also encounter resistance from others when you start sharing new perspectives. People can sometimes feel threatened when their viewpoint is challenged, even indirectly. To navigate this, communicate your ideas respectfully and validate others' feelings. Frame your alternative perspective as an addition to the conversation, not a rejection of others' views. As we conclude this chapter on reframing perspectives, you might be wondering what other mental tools you can add to your critical thinking toolkit. We've explored how to shift our own viewpoints, but what about the unconscious biases that might be coloring our perceptions without us even realizing it? In the next chapter, we'll delve into the hidden world of cognitive biases, exploring how these mental shortcuts can both help and hinder our thinking. Are you ready to uncover the invisible forces shaping your thoughts? Chapter 5, Bias Detail. Imagine you're looking at the world through a pair of tinted glasses. Everything you see is colored by the lens, but you've worn these glasses for so long that you don't even realize they're there. Now what if I told you that we all wear such glasses, invisible lenses that subtly alter our perception of reality? These lenses are our cognitive biases, and they influence our thoughts, decisions, and actions in ways we often fail to recognize. But what exactly are these biases, and why should we care about them? Think of biases as mental shortcuts our brains have developed over time. They're like well-worn paths in a forest, easy to follow, but not always leading us to where we truly want to go. These shortcuts can be helpful in some situations, allowing us to make quick decisions when time is of the essence. However, they can also lead us astray, causing us to make flawed judgments and misinterpret situations. The process of identifying and counteracting these biases is what we call bias detox. It's about cleansing our mental palate, stripping away the layers of unconscious prejudice and preconception that cloud our judgment. But why is this detox so crucial? First and foremost, 
Biases can lead to flawed decisions and misunderstandings. When we're unaware of our biases, we might make choices based on faulty assumptions or incomplete information. This can have consequences ranging from minor inconveniences to major life-altering mistakes. By becoming aware of our biases and learning to counteract them, we can make more informed, rational decisions. Secondly, reducing biases enhances our objectivity and sense of fairness. In a world that often seems divided, the ability to approach situations with genuine impartiality is invaluable. It allows us to evaluate information more accurately and treat others more equitably. This enhanced objectivity can improve our personal relationships, professional interactions, and even our understanding of broader social issues. Lastly, a bias detox can significantly improve the quality of our critical thinking and problem-solving skills. When we're able to see past our biases, we open ourselves up to a wider range of possibilities and solutions. We become more innovative, more adaptable, and better equipped to tackle complex challenges. So, how do we begin to recognize these invisible influencers? Let's start by exploring some common cognitive biases. One of the most pervasive is confirmation bias, our tendency to seek out information that confirms our existing beliefs while ignoring or discounting contradictory evidence. This bias can lead us to become entrenched in our opinions, resistant to new ideas or perspectives that challenge our worldview. Another prevalent bias is the anchoring bias. This is our tendency to rely too heavily on the first piece of information we receive when making decisions. For example, in a negotiation, the first number mentioned often serves as an anchor, influencing the entire discussion that follows. This can lead to skewed judgments and missed opportunities. The availability heuristic is yet another common bias. This is our tendency to overestimate the likelihood of events with which we're familiar. If we've recently heard about a plane crash, for instance, we might temporarily overestimate the dangers of air travel, even though statistically it remains one of the safest forms of transportation. These biases, along with many others, can have a significant impact on our decision-making processes. They can lead to misjudgments and errors, causing us to make poor choices or draw incorrect conclusions. Moreover, biases can limit our innovation and creativity by constraining our thinking within familiar patterns and preconceptions. Now that we've identified some common biases, how do we go about counteracting them? One effective strategy is to practice bias interruption techniques. One such technique is delayed decision-making. By consciously pausing before making a judgment or decision, we give ourselves time to reflect and consider alternative perspectives. This can help us avoid knee-jerk reactions driven by unconscious biases. Another powerful technique is actively seeking out contrary evidence. When you find yourself strongly agreeing with an idea or opinion, challenge yourself to find credible arguments or evidence that contradict your view. This doesn't mean you have to change your mind, but it helps ensure that your beliefs are based on a balanced consideration of available information rather than bias-driven selective attention. Developing objective analysis skills is another crucial aspect of bias detox. One way to do this is by using critical thinking checklists when evaluating decisions. These checklists can include questions like, have I considered alternative explanations? Am I basing my conclusion on facts or assumptions? What evidence would change my mind? By systematically working through such questions, we can catch biases before they lead us astray. Peer review and feedback mechanisms can also be invaluable in identifying and counteracting biases. Often, others can spot our blind spots more easily than we can ourselves. By regularly seeking input from diverse perspectives, we can uncover biases we might have missed and broaden our understanding of complex issues. Establishing a bias-free mindset requires ongoing effort and vigilance. One effective practice is continuous self-monitoring. This involves conducting regular bias audits to identify patterns in your thinking and decision-making. Are there certain types of situations where you tend to jump to conclusions? Do you notice yourself dismissing certain sources of information more readily than others? By becoming more mindful of your thought processes, you can catch biases in action and correct for them. 
Accountability practices can also be powerful tools in maintaining a bias-free mindset. Consider partnering with a bias buddy, someone you trust to give you honest feedback and call you out when they notice potential biases in your thinking. This mutual support system can help keep you on track and provide valuable outside perspective. Setting personal accountability goals can also be effective. These might include commitments like, I will seek out opposing viewpoints on at least one issue each week, or I will pause and reflect before making any major decision. By setting concrete goals and holding yourself accountable to them, you can gradually build habits that counteract bias. To put these concepts into practice, try incorporating some bias-focused exercises into your daily routine. One such exercise is bias journaling. At the end of each day, take a few minutes to reflect on decisions you made or opinions you formed. Try to identify instances where biases might have influenced your thinking. Were there situations where you jumped to conclusions without considering all the evidence? Did you dismiss someone's opinion because it didn't align with your existing beliefs? Once you've identified potential biases, reflect on how you might avoid similar biases in the future. This might involve strategies like seeking out more diverse sources of information, taking more time to reflect before forming opinions, or actively challenging your initial assumptions. Another practical exercise is the bias challenge. Regularly seek out information that contradicts your beliefs or challenges your assumptions. This could involve reading articles from sources you typically disagree with, engaging in respectful discussions with people who hold different views, or exploring topics from unfamiliar perspectives. The goal isn't necessarily to change your mind, but to ensure that your views are based on a comprehensive understanding rather than biased perception. As you embark on this bias detox journey, it's helpful to consider the range of possible outcomes. A good outcome might be an increased awareness of your personal biases. You might find yourself occasionally catching and correcting biased thinking, leading to more balanced judgments in some situations. An excellent outcome would involve regularly identifying and mitigating biases across various aspects of your life. You might notice that you're making more objective and fair decisions, both in personal matters and professional contexts. Your ability to consider multiple perspectives and weigh evidence impartially could become a notable strength. The best possible outcome is developing a strong bias-resistant mindset that becomes second nature. This could result in significantly improved critical thinking and judgment across all areas of your life. You might find yourself better equipped to navigate complex issues, make sound decisions under pressure, and engage more productively with diverse viewpoints. Of course, the path to bias detox isn't always smooth. One common issue is denial of personal biases. It's human nature to believe that we're more objective than we really are. If you find yourself thinking, I don't have biases, I'm completely rational, that's a red flag. The solution is to approach the process with humility and openness. Remember, everyone has biases. Recognizing this fact is the first step towards addressing them. Another challenge is the difficulty of identifying subtle biases. Some biases are obvious once pointed out, but others can be incredibly nuanced and hard to spot. To overcome this, try using tools and checklists designed to systematically uncover biases. These might include questionnaires that probe your decision-making processes or exercises that challenge you to consider alternative perspectives. You might also find yourself feeling discouraged by the prevalence of biases. As you become more aware of cognitive biases, you might start noticing them everywhere, in yourself, in others, in media and public discourse. This can feel overwhelming. The key is to focus on progress over perfection. Celebrate small victories, like catching yourself in a biased thought pattern or successfully considering multiple perspectives on an issue. Remember, the goal isn't to eliminate all bias, which is likely impossible, but to become more aware and better equipped to counteract its effects. As we conclude this chapter on bias detox, you might be wondering about the next step in your journey towards clearer, more effective thinking. We've explored how to identify and counteract the unconscious biases that can cloud our judgment. 
But what about the information we use to form our opinions and make decisions in the first place? In our next chapter, we'll delve into a powerful approach that can revolutionize the way you process information and draw conclusions. Are you ready to discover a method that can cut through the noise and help you see the world with unprecedented clarity? Chapter 6. Data-Driven Mindset In a world awash with information, how do we separate the signal from the noise? How do we navigate the sea of opinions, claims, and assertions to find solid ground on which to base our decisions? The answer lies in cultivating a particular way of thinking, a mindset that values facts over feelings, evidence over intuition. But what exactly does this mindset entail, and how can we develop it? Imagine you're a detective trying to solve a complex case. You wouldn't rely solely on hunches or gut feelings, would you? Instead, you'd meticulously gather clues, analyze evidence, and follow the trail of facts to reach a conclusion. This approach, prioritizing objective information over subjective impressions, is at the heart of what we call a data-driven mindset. But why is this approach so crucial? First and foremost, relying on data leads to more accurate and reliable decisions. When we base our choices on solid evidence rather than assumptions or gut feelings, we're much more likely to achieve the outcomes we desire. This is true whether we're making personal decisions about our health or career or professional decisions that could impact an entire organization. Moreover, a data-driven mindset helps reduce the influence of emotions and biases on our decision-making. We all have emotional reactions and ingrained biases that can cloud our judgment. By focusing on objective data, we can counteract these subjective influences and make more rational choices. Perhaps most importantly, adopting a data-driven approach enhances our credibility and effectiveness in both professional and personal contexts. When we can back up our assertions with solid evidence, we're more likely to be taken seriously and to persuade others. This can lead to greater success in our careers, more productive personal relationships, and a stronger ability to affect change in the world around us. So how do we begin to cultivate this data-driven mindset? It starts with recognizing the importance of factual thinking. In critical thinking, evidence plays a crucial role. It's the foundation upon which we build our understanding of the world. Without evidence, our beliefs are merely opinions, potentially interesting, but not necessarily reflective of reality. One common pitfall in thinking is the anecdotal fallacy, the tendency to give too much weight to personal experiences or isolated examples. While personal experiences can be valuable, they're often not representative of broader trends or patterns. A data-driven mindset involves looking beyond anecdotes to seek out more comprehensive and reliable sources of information. Another key aspect of factual thinking is the ability to differentiate between facts and assumptions. This isn't always as straightforward as it might seem. We often mistake our interpretations or beliefs for facts without realizing we're doing so. Developing fact-checking techniques can help us avoid this trap. This might involve asking questions like, what's the source of this information? Is it verifiable? Are there other interpretations that could explain the same data? Recognizing speculation and opinion is another crucial skill. Often, information is presented as fact when it's really just someone's interpretation or prediction. Learning to spot phrases like, I think, probably, or it seems, can help us identify when we're dealing with opinion rather than fact. Of course, adopting a data-driven mindset isn't just about recognizing the importance of evidence. It's also about knowing how to gather and evaluate information effectively. This brings us to the skills needed for effective information gathering. One of the most crucial skills in this regard is the ability to evaluate sources critically. Not all sources of information are created equal, and in today's digital age, we're bombarded with information from countless directions. Learning to assess the credibility and reliability of sources is essential. This involves considering factors like the author's expertise, the publication's reputation, and the recency of the information. It's also important to look for potential biases or hidden agendas in information sources. Is the author or publication known to have a particular stance on the issue, 
Are they trying to sell something or promote a specific viewpoint? Once we've gathered information from credible sources, the next step is to analyze it effectively. This often involves developing a basic understanding of statistics. While you don't need to become a math whiz, knowing concepts like averages, percentages, and trends can help you interpret data more accurately. It's also crucial to be able to identify logical fallacies in arguments. These are common errors in reasoning that can lead to incorrect conclusions. Some examples include the straw man fallacy, misrepresenting someone's argument to make it easier to attack, the appeal to authority fallacy, assuming something is true because an expert said it, and the false dichotomy fallacy, presenting only two options when there are actually more. Now, having a data-driven mindset isn't just about gathering and analyzing information. It's about integrating that information into our decision-making processes. This is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. How do we apply evidence in our daily lives? One key aspect is making informed choices based on data rather than emotion or intuition. This doesn't mean completely disregarding our feelings. Emotions can provide valuable insights, but it does mean checking our emotional reactions against objective evidence before making important decisions. It's also important to be aware of emotional decision traps. For instance, the sunk cost fallacy, the tendency to continue with something because we've already invested time or resources even when it's no longer beneficial. By focusing on data rather than emotions, we can avoid these traps and make more rational choices. Of course, in our information-rich world, there's a risk of becoming overwhelmed by data. This is where the skill of avoiding information overload comes in. It's not about gathering as much data as possible, but about prioritizing the most relevant information. This often involves simplifying complex information for clarity. Data visualization techniques can be helpful here, allowing us to see patterns and trends that might not be apparent in raw numbers. The goal is to distill complex information down to its essential insights, making it easier to act upon. To put these concepts into practice, try incorporating some data-driven exercises into your daily routine. One effective practice is evidence-based decision-making. The next time you face a significant decision, challenge yourself to gather relevant data before making your choice. This might involve researching statistics, reading expert opinions, or conducting your own small-scale experiments. Another useful exercise is source evaluation. Choose three information sources you encounter regularly, perhaps a news website, a social media feed, and a professional journal. Critically assess the credibility of each source. Consider factors like the author's expertise, the presence of citations or references, and any potential biases or agendas. As you begin to incorporate these practices into your life, you might start to notice some changes. A good outcome would be an occasional use of data to inform your decisions. You might find yourself pausing to fact-check claims more often or seeking out statistics to support your arguments. An excellent outcome would involve regularly integrating data into your decision-making processes. You might develop a habit of critically evaluating information sources and basing your choices on solid evidence. This could lead to more effective problem-solving and a reputation for making well-informed decisions. The best possible outcome is developing a habitual reliance on evidence that becomes second nature. In this scenario, you automatically seek out and critically evaluate data before making decisions or forming opinions. This could lead to highly effective decision-making across all areas of your life. You might find yourself recognized as a rational and credible thinker by others, sought out for your balanced and well-informed perspective. Of course, developing a data-driven mindset isn't without its challenges. One common issue is feeling overwhelmed by too much data. In our information-rich world, it's easy to get bogged down in details and lose sight of the big picture. If you find yourself in this situation, try to focus on the most relevant information. Ask yourself, what data is most crucial for this particular decision? What information will have the biggest impact on the outcome? Another potential pitfall is difficulty in discerning credible sources. 
With the proliferation of information online, it can be challenging to separate reliable sources from unreliable ones. To overcome this, invest time in learning and applying source evaluation criteria. Look for indicators of credibility like author expertise, citation of sources, and reputation of the publishing platform. You might also encounter resistance when data contradicts your existing beliefs. It's human nature to seek out information that confirms what we already think and to dismiss contradictory evidence. Overcoming this tendency requires a commitment to objectivity and a willingness to change our minds when the evidence warrants it. Remember, the goal is to arrive at the most accurate understanding, not to prove ourselves right. As we conclude this chapter on developing a data-driven mindset, you might be wondering about the next step in your journey towards more effective thinking. We've explored how to prioritize evidence and make decisions based on solid data. But what about those times when emotions run high, when our feelings seem to overwhelm our ability to think clearly? In our next chapter, we'll delve into a powerful technique that can help you navigate even the most emotionally charged situations with clarity and composure. Are you ready to discover the secret to maintaining your cool when it matters most? Chapter 7, Emotion Reset. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where your emotions seem to take over, leaving your rational mind in the dust? Perhaps you've said something in anger that you later regretted or made a hasty decision based on fear or excitement. If so, you're not alone. Our emotions are powerful forces that can significantly influence our thoughts and actions, sometimes in ways that don't serve us well. But what if there was a way to press a reset button on our emotional responses? What if we could find a balance between feeling our emotions fully and preventing them from hijacking our ability to think critically? This is the essence of what we call an emotion reset, and it's a crucial skill in our journey towards more effective thinking and decision-making. The concept of an emotion reset isn't about suppressing or ignoring our feelings. Rather, it's about developing the ability to acknowledge and experience our emotions without being overwhelmed by them. It's about creating a space between stimulus and response where we can choose how to act rather than simply reacting based on our immediate emotional impulses. But why is this skill so important? First and foremost, emotions, when left unchecked, can cloud our judgment and hinder our ability to think critically. When we're in the grip of a strong emotion, whether it's anger, fear, or even excessive excitement, our perception narrows. We lose sight of the bigger picture and struggle to consider alternative perspectives or long-term consequences. Moreover, learning to regulate our emotions can lead to significantly better decision-making and interpersonal interactions. When we're not at the mercy of our emotional impulses, we can respond to situations more thoughtfully and effectively. This can improve our relationships, both personal and professional, and help us navigate complex social situations with greater ease. Perhaps most importantly, mastering the skill of emotion reset can enhance our self-control and reduce stress. When we feel in control of our emotional responses, we're less likely to feel overwhelmed by life's challenges. This can lead to a greater sense of calm and well-being, even in the face of difficult circumstances. To begin developing this skill, we first need to understand how emotions influence our thinking. Our brains are wired to prioritize emotional information. This made sense from an evolutionary perspective. Quick emotional responses could mean the difference between life and death in dangerous situations. However, in our modern world, this emotional prioritization can sometimes work against us. When we experience a strong emotion, it can trigger what psychologists call an emotional hijack. This is when the emotional centers of our brain take over, bypassing our more rational, analytical thought processes. During an emotional hijack, our ability to think critically is severely impaired. We might jump to conclusions, make assumptions without evidence, or act in ways that don't align with our long-term goals or values. Emotions also have a significant impact on our perception and judgment. When we're angry, for instance, we're more likely to interpret neutral actions as hostile. When we're anxious, we tend to overestimate risks and underestimate our ability to cope. 
These emotional influences on our thinking often happen outside our conscious awareness, shaping our decisions and behaviors in subtle but powerful ways. To effectively reset our emotions, we need to become adept at identifying our emotional triggers. These are the situations, thoughts, or events that tend to provoke strong emotional responses in us. Recognizing these triggers is the first step in managing our emotional reactions. One way to identify triggers is by paying attention to the physiological signs of emotional arousal. Our bodies often react to emotions before we're consciously aware of them. A racing heart, tense muscles, or a knot in the stomach can all be signs that we're experiencing a strong emotion. By tuning into these physical sensations, we can catch emotional reactions early before they escalate into full-blown emotional hijacks. It can also be helpful to map our emotional responses to different situations. Over time, we might notice patterns, certain types of interactions or circumstances that consistently trigger strong emotions. By recognizing these patterns, we can prepare ourselves to manage our emotions more effectively in similar situations in the future. Once we've developed a better understanding of our emotional landscape, we can start to implement techniques for emotional regulation. One powerful approach is mindfulness practice. Mindfulness involves staying present in the moment and observing our thoughts and feelings without judgment. By practicing mindfulness regularly, we can develop the ability to observe our emotions as they arise without immediately reacting to them. This creates a space between the emotional trigger and our response, allowing us to choose how to act rather than being driven by automatic emotional reactions. A key aspect of mindfulness is acceptance without judgment. This means acknowledging our emotions as they are without trying to push them away or criticize ourselves for feeling them. Paradoxically, accepting our emotions often reduces their power over us, allowing them to pass more quickly and easily. Another effective technique for emotional regulation is cognitive restructuring. This involves challenging negative or irrational thoughts and replacing them with more balanced, rational alternatives. Our thoughts and emotions are closely linked, and by changing the way we think about situations, we can often change how we feel about them. For example, if we find ourselves thinking, this always happens to me, I'm such a failure, we might challenge this thought by asking ourselves, is it really true that this always happens? Can I think of times when things went well? Am I really a failure, or am I just experiencing a setback? By questioning these negative thoughts and replacing them with more balanced perspectives, we can often reduce the intensity of our emotional reactions. The ultimate goal of these emotional regulation techniques is to find a balance between emotion and logic. This doesn't mean suppressing our emotions or trying to be purely rational. Instead, it's about harmonizing our feelings with reason, using both to inform our decisions and actions. One way to do this is by acknowledging our emotions without reacting impulsively to them. We can recognize that we're feeling angry, for instance, without lashing out or making decisions based solely on that anger. Instead, we can use the emotion as information, what is this anger telling us about the situation or our needs? In fact, emotions can be valuable data points in our decision-making process. They often highlight what's important to us and can provide intuitive insights that pure logic might miss. The key is to consider our emotions alongside other forms of evidence rather than letting them dominate our thinking. Maintaining emotional composure under stress is another crucial aspect of the emotion reset process. Stress can amplify our emotional reactions, making it even harder to think clearly. Learning stress reduction techniques, such as deep breathing or progressive muscle relaxation, can help us stay calm and focused even in challenging situations. Building emotional resilience is also important. This involves developing the ability to bounce back from setbacks and maintain a sense of equilibrium in the face of life's ups and downs. Resilience isn't about avoiding negative emotions, but about being able to navigate them effectively and return to a balanced state. To put these concepts into practice, try incorporating some emotion reset exercises into your daily routine. One effective practice is setting regular emotional check-ins throughout the day. 
Set reminders on your phone or computer to pause for a moment and assess your emotional state. What are you feeling right now? Are there any physical sensations associated with these emotions? This practice can help you become more aware of your emotional patterns and catch potential hijacks early. Another useful exercise is thought-challenging practice. When you notice yourself having a negative or irrational thought, take a moment to examine it critically. Is this thought based on facts or is it an assumption? Are there alternative explanations or perspectives you haven't considered? Then, try to replace the negative thought with a more balanced, rational alternative. As you begin to incorporate these practices into your life, you might start to notice some changes. A good outcome would be an increased awareness of your emotional states. You might find yourself catching emotional reactions earlier before they escalate into full-blown hijacks. An excellent outcome would involve consistently managing your emotions effectively. You might develop a habit of pausing to regulate your emotions before making important decisions or responding to challenging situations. This could lead to improved relationships and more effective decision-making across various areas of your life. The best possible outcome is mastering emotional regulation to the point where it becomes second nature. In this scenario, you automatically engage in emotion reset practices when needed, maintaining exceptional self-control even in highly stressful or emotionally charged situations. This could result in enhanced overall well-being and effectiveness in both personal and professional contexts. Of course, developing the skill of emotion reset isn't without its challenges. One common issue is difficulty recognizing emotions in the moment. We might find ourselves reacting before we've even realized we're experiencing a strong emotion. If you encounter this problem, try incorporating more mindfulness exercises into your daily routine. Regular practice can help you become more attuned to your emotional states, making it easier to catch reactions early. Another potential pitfall is feeling overwhelmed by strong emotions. Even when we recognize what we're feeling, we might struggle to regulate our responses effectively. In these situations, it can be helpful to employ deep breathing techniques or take a brief timeout if possible. Remember, it's okay to step away from a situation briefly to regain your composure. You might also experience frustration with slow progress. Changing emotional patterns that have been ingrained over years or even decades takes time and patience. If you find yourself getting discouraged, try to focus on small, incremental improvements. Celebrate the times when you successfully regulate your emotions, even if they seem minor. Over time, these small successes can add up to significant changes in your emotional responses. As we conclude this chapter on emotion reset, you might be wondering about the next step in your journey towards more effective thinking. We've explored how to manage our emotions and prevent them from hijacking our rational minds. But how do we ensure that these new skills and insights stick with us over the long term? How do we turn these practices into lasting habits that fundamentally reshape our thinking patterns? In our next chapter, we'll delve into a powerful technique that can help you consolidate your learning and track your progress over time. Are you ready to discover the secret to making your mental reprogramming permanent? Chapter 8, Routine Reflection. Have you ever had the experience of learning something new, feeling excited about it, and then promptly forgetting most of it within a few days or weeks? Or perhaps you've set goals for self-improvement, only to find yourself falling back into old habits before long. If so, you're not alone. The human mind, for all its incredible capabilities, can sometimes seem like a leaky bucket when it comes to retaining new information and habits. But what if there was a way to seal those leaks? What if you could not only retain what you've learned, but also deepen your understanding and continuously improve over time? This is where the power of routine reflection comes into play. But what exactly do we mean by reflection? And why is it so crucial to our journey of mental reprogramming? At its core, routine reflection is about taking the time to think about your thinking. It's a metacognitive process that involves stepping back from your day-to-day -day experiences and examining them with a critical eye. This might sound simple, but it's a powerful tool 
that can transform the way you learn, grow, and navigate the world. The importance of this practice cannot be overstated. First and foremost, reflection solidifies learning and promotes continuous improvement. When we reflect on our experiences and the new ideas we've encountered, we're not just passively reviewing information. We're actively processing it, making connections, and integrating it into our existing knowledge base. This deep engagement with the material helps to cement it in our minds, making it more likely that we'll retain and be able to apply what we've learned. Moreover, regular reflection increases self-awareness and understanding of our thought patterns. As we examine our thoughts, decisions, and reactions, we start to notice patterns and tendencies we might not have been conscious of before. This increased self-awareness is invaluable for personal growth and development. It allows us to recognize both our strengths and areas for improvement, giving us a clearer picture of where we stand and where we want to go. Perhaps most importantly, routine reflection helps us identify our successes and areas for growth. It's easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day rush of life and lose sight of the progress we're making. Regular reflection allows us to step back and acknowledge our achievements, no matter how small. At the same time, it helps us pinpoint areas where we're still struggling or where we'd like to improve further. This balanced view of our progress can be incredibly motivating and helps us stay on track with our personal development goals. So, how do we go about incorporating reflection into our daily lives? One powerful approach is through the practice of reflective journaling. This involves setting aside time each day to write about your experiences, thoughts, and insights. But this isn't just about recording events, it's about critically examining them and drawing meaningful conclusions. Effective reflective journaling often involves using prompts that encourage critical thinking. These might be questions like, what was the most challenging part of my day and why? Or, how did I apply the new skills I'm learning? Or, what assumptions did I make today and were they valid? By engaging with these types of questions, we push ourselves to think more deeply about our experiences and extract valuable lessons from them. Another key aspect of reflective journaling is recording insights and lessons learned. As you reflect on your day, pay attention to those aha moments, times when you gained a new understanding or saw something from a different perspective. By writing these down, you not only cement the learning in your mind, but also create a record that you can refer back to later. As you engage in regular reflection, you'll likely start to notice patterns in your thinking and behavior. This is where the practice of assessing thought patterns comes in. By tracking your progress in critical thinking over time, you can get a clearer picture of how you're growing and changing. One way to do this is by setting benchmarks and indicators for yourself. These might be specific skills you're trying to develop, like questioning assumptions or considering multiple perspectives. As you reflect each day, you can note instances where you successfully applied these skills, gradually building a picture of your progress over time. Reviewing decisions and outcomes is another crucial part of this assessment process. Look back at important decisions you've made and consider the results. Were there any patterns in the decisions that turned out well? What about those that didn't go as planned? This kind of analysis can provide valuable insights into your decision-making process and help you refine it over time. Of course, the goal of reflection isn't just to pat ourselves on the back for our successes. It's also about identifying areas for improvement. As you reflect, try to recognize persistent challenges areas where you consistently struggle or fall short of your goals. These aren't failures, but opportunities for growth. Once you've identified these areas for improvement, the next step is to create action plans for development. This might involve setting specific goals, researching new strategies, or seeking out additional resources or support. The key is to approach these challenges with a growth mindset seeing them not as fixed limitations, but as skills you can develop with practice and effort. As you continue your practice of routine reflection, you'll likely find that new mental habits start to form. But how can we ensure that these new habits stick? 
This is where reinforcement strategies come into play. One effective approach is to use positive reinforcement techniques. This might involve rewarding yourself in small ways when you consistently engage in reflection or when you notice positive changes in your thinking patterns. The reward doesn't have to be big. It could be as simple as allowing yourself a few minutes of a favorite activity or marking your calendar with a gold star. The key is to create a positive association with the habit of reflection. Another powerful strategy is habit stacking, linking your new habit of reflection to an existing habit in your daily routine. For example, you might decide to spend a few minutes journaling right after you brush your teeth in the evening. By connecting the new habit to an established one, you make it more likely that you'll remember to do it and that it will become an automatic part of your day. As you solidify these new mental habits, it's important to keep looking forward. Setting future cognitive goals helps ensure that you continue to grow and challenge yourself. This might involve long-term vision planning, thinking about where you want your mental skills to be in a year, five years, or even further down the line. Remember though, that as you grow and change, your goals may need to adapt as well. What seemed like an ambitious goal when you started might become easily achievable as you develop your skills. Or you might discover new areas of interest that you want to explore. Be prepared to adjust your goals as you progress, always pushing yourself to new levels of cognitive development. To put these concepts into practice, try incorporating some reflection exercises into your daily routine. One simple but powerful practice is to set aside time each day, even just 10 or 15 minutes, to reflect on your thoughts and actions. During this time, you might write in a journal, meditate on your experiences, or simply sit quietly and think. Another useful exercise is to hold weekly review sessions. At the end of each week, take some time to summarize your progress and plan for the week ahead. What were your major insights or achievements this week? Where did you struggle? What do you want to focus on in the coming week? This broader perspective can complement your daily reflections and help you see larger patterns and trends in your development. As you begin to incorporate these practices into your life, you might start to notice some changes. A good outcome would be occasional reflection leading to incremental improvements. You might find yourself pausing to think critically about your experiences more often, leading to small but meaningful insights and changes in your behavior. An excellent outcome would involve regular reflection, resulting in significant personal growth. You might notice substantial changes in your thinking patterns, decision-making processes, and overall self-awareness. This could lead to improvements in various areas of your life, from your relationships to your professional performance. The best possible outcome is developing deep self-awareness and a habit of continuous optimization of your thinking patterns. In this scenario, reflection becomes an integral part of your daily life, seamlessly woven into your routines. You're constantly learning from your experiences, adapting your thinking, and pushing yourself to new levels of cognitive development. Of course, establishing a routine of reflection isn't always smooth sailing. One common issue is inconsistency in reflective practice. It's easy to start strong, but then let the habit slip as other demands on your time and attention arise. If you find yourself struggling with consistency, try scheduling specific times for reflection and setting reminders. Treat these reflection sessions as important appointments with yourself, just as you would any other crucial commitment. Another potential pitfall is engaging in superficial reflections without much depth. You might find yourself going through the motions of reflection without really delving into meaningful insights. To overcome this, try using guided prompts or questions to structure your reflections. These can help you dig deeper and explore your thoughts and experiences more thoroughly. You might also encounter feelings of overwhelm from negative self-assessment. As you become more aware of your thought patterns and behaviors, it's natural to notice areas where you fall short of your ideals. This can sometimes lead to discouragement or self-criticism. If you find yourself in this situation, Try to shift your focus to progress rather than perfection. Acknowledge the areas where you're improving, 
even if the changes are small. Practice self-compassion, remembering that personal growth is a journey, not a destination. As we conclude this chapter on routine reflection, you might be wondering about the final piece of the puzzle in your journey of mental reprogramming. We've explored how to examine and refine your thinking patterns, but how do you ensure that these changes stick for the long haul? How do you guard against slipping back into old habits of thought? In our final chapter, we'll delve into a powerful approach that can help you lock in your progress and continue growing long after you've finished this book. Are you ready to discover the key to lasting mental transformation? Chapter 9, Stay Reprogrammed. Congratulations, you've made it to the final chapter of our journey together. By now, you've explored a wealth of strategies and techniques for enhancing your critical thinking skills. You've learned how to clear your mind, rewire your reactions, challenge your assumptions, reframe perspectives, detox from biases, adopt a data-driven mindset, reset your emotions, and engage in routine reflection. But as we stand at the threshold of the conclusion, a crucial question arises. How do we ensure that all of this valuable learning doesn't simply fade away like footprints in the sand? This is where the concept of staying reprogrammed comes into play. It's not enough to simply learn these skills. We need to integrate them so deeply into our daily lives that they become as natural as breathing. This chapter is about cementing your progress, turning your newfound skills into lasting habits, and continuing to grow and evolve long after you've closed the pages of this book. Let's start by considering how the skills you've developed throughout this book can truly empower you. Think about the increased confidence you now have in your decision-making abilities. Where you once might have hesitated or second-guessed yourself, you now have a toolkit of strategies to approach choices methodically and rationally. This confidence isn't just a feeling, it's grounded in real skills that you've practiced and honed. Moreover, you've developed the ability to navigate complex situations with greater ease. The world is rarely black and white, but your enhanced critical thinking skills allow you to see the nuances and complexities in any situation. You're no longer overwhelmed by ambiguity. Instead, you can analyze, evaluate, and make informed decisions even in the face of uncertainty. Your problem-solving skills have also been significantly enhanced. You're now equipped to tackle challenges more effectively, breaking them down into manageable parts, analyzing them from multiple angles, and developing innovative solutions. You're not just solving problems. You're thinking creatively, seeing opportunities where others might see obstacles. But the benefits of your mental reprogramming extend far beyond your individual capabilities. Consider how these skills can improve your relationships. You've learned to communicate better, listening actively and responding thoughtfully rather than reactively. You're now more adept at understanding others' perspectives, even when they differ significantly from your own. This enhanced empathy and understanding can lead to stronger, more meaningful connections with others. Moreover, your critical thinking skills can be a powerful tool for resolving conflicts. Instead of getting caught up in emotional reactions, you can approach disagreements analytically, identifying the root causes and working towards mutually beneficial solutions. This ability to navigate conflicts constructively can strengthen your relationships, both personal and professional. Reflect for a moment on what you're now capable of achieving that might have seemed out of reach before. You have the tools to pursue your personal goals more effectively, applying critical thinking to break down your ambitions into actionable steps and overcome obstacles strategically. In your professional life, your analytical skills can help you stand out, positioning you as a valuable asset capable of tackling complex challenges and leading with clarity and purpose. As you continue to practice the concepts from this book, you'll likely find that your results improve with less and less effort. This is because critical thinking is becoming second nature to you. What once required conscious effort is now becoming an instinctive part of how you approach the world. This effortless integration not only reduces mental fatigue, but also frees up cognitive resources for even higher level thinking and creativity. 
Moreover, the benefits of your enhanced critical thinking skills compound over time. Each success builds on the last, leading to exponential growth in your capabilities. You're not just improving linearly, you're creating a positive feedback loop where each achievement opens doors to even greater opportunities. Of course, maintaining these new habits isn't always easy. You may encounter obstacles to persistence, such as setbacks or periods of low motivation. The key is to anticipate these challenges and have strategies in place to overcome them. Remember that setbacks are not failures, they're opportunities for learning and growth. Stay motivated by regularly reminding yourself of how far you've come and the benefits you've experienced from your enhanced critical thinking skills. It's also important to adapt your strategies as your circumstances change. What works for you now might need to be adjusted as you face new challenges or enter different phases of your life. Be flexible and willing to experiment with different approaches to maintaining your critical thinking habits. To ensure long-term retention of these skills, make regular practice and periodic review a part of your routine. This might involve setting aside time each week to deliberately exercise your critical thinking muscles, perhaps by analyzing a complex issue or solving a challenging problem. Engaging with supportive communities, whether online forums, local groups, or professional networks can also help reinforce your habits and provide opportunities for continued learning. As you move forward, you'll find countless opportunities to apply your enhanced critical thinking skills in various contexts. In your personal life, you might use these skills to make better financial decisions, improve your health and wellness choices, or navigate complex family dynamics. Professionally, your critical thinking abilities can help you innovate in your field, lead more effectively, and adapt to rapidly changing work environments. Embrace the mindset of continuous learning. Seek out new experiences and perspectives that challenge your thinking. Stay open to new ideas and be willing to revise your beliefs in light of new evidence. Remember, the goal isn't to be right all the time, but to continually refine and improve your understanding of the world. As you live this reprogrammed life, take time to celebrate your cognitive growth. Recognize and reward your progress, no matter how small. Share your successes with others, not to boast, but to inspire and encourage. Your journey of mental reprogramming can have a ripple effect, positively influencing those around you. Indeed, one of the most powerful ways to reinforce your own growth is by helping others on their critical thinking journeys. Lead by example, demonstrating the power of critical thinking in your daily life. When opportunities arise, share what you've learned with others. Mentor those who are just beginning their journey of mental reprogramming. As we conclude this book, I want to leave you with a final powerful insight. The skills you've developed aren't just tools for personal success. They're keys to unlocking a better world. In an era of information overload, polarization, and complex global challenges, critical thinkers like you are more important than ever. Your ability to analyze information objectively, consider multiple perspectives, and make rational decisions doesn't just benefit you, it contributes to a more thoughtful, nuanced discourse in society. Your enhanced problem-solving skills don't just help you in your personal and professional life, they equip you to tackle the big issues facing our world. Imagine a society where more people approach challenges with the critical thinking skills you've developed. Picture a world where decisions, from the personal to the global, were made based on careful analysis of evidence rather than knee-jerk reactions or blind adherence to ideology. That's the world you're helping to create every time you apply the skills you've learned. You're not just a passive consumer of information anymore. You're an active, discerning thinker, capable of cutting through noise and confusion to find truth and meaning. You're equipped to be a leader, an innovator, a problem solver in whatever field or community you choose to engage with. But perhaps most importantly, you've developed the most valuable skill of all, the ability to continue learning, growing, and adapting in a rapidly changing world. The specific challenges we face may evolve, but your enhanced critical thinking skills give you the flexibility and resilience to meet whatever the future holds. 
So as you close this book, remember, this isn't the end of your journey. It's just the beginning. You've reprogrammed your mind, but the real adventure lies in living out that reprogramming every day, in every decision, in every interaction. As you apply these critical thinking skills, you may find yourself facing a new challenge, effectively communicating your insights and ideas to others. After all, what good is clear thinking if you can't express it clearly? There's a crucial next step in your journey of mental transformation. To truly maximize the impact of your newfound critical thinking abilities, you'll need to master the art of articulating your thoughts with precision and impact. That's why I've created a companion guide that picks up where this book leaves off. Speak smartly, critical thinking for effective communication. It's the key to unlocking your full potential as a thinker and communicator. Tap the center of the video now to continue your transformation journey.